Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Welcome to Slasher Sunday. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yep. Slasher Sunday is here. We skipped last week because Kaylee was off gallivanting around <laughs> the Stanley Hotel. I was. Looking for Jack Torrance. Yep. And Wendy Torrance. Danny Torrance. And yeah. Mr. Is there any other Torrances? There are no other Torrances, <laughs> but I was also looking for Grady. Hmm. So, yeah. The open house, or just open house. Oh, boy. So, this is nowhere <laughs> to be found except for on good old YouTube. And yes. they actually have yep. a, a very good-looking rip on there. So, if for some reason you are interested in watching this masterpiece, <laughs> you can do so on there. Um, Yeah, this is, this is legit, like, one of the worst slashers. Of the 80s. It's so bad. It's really it's bad. It's so bad. And especially coming from, you know, something like American Gothic that we just like had so much fun with. And it feels like an like a lesser known, you know, maybe underrated like slasher film from that time. This one is just awful. It's such a bad like it's not a hidden gem. It's like a purpose like it, it should be stay hidden yes like don't <laughs> like it should have never hidden been uncovered waste. yes <laughs> but we watched it it was at least entertaining with how bad it was i would say that this is kind of one of those films that you can watch for like entertainment entertainment for how horrible it is yeah. um it's not unwatchable it's just very very bad yeah well, let's get into all the reasons that it's bad i'm gonna start with the most I don't know if the most obvious, but I, I would say the most glaring issue with the film. Ooh, I don't know, actually. No, I was going to say one thing, but I'm like, geez, there's a couple. All right, let, let's start with one of the most glaring issues. How about that? The music is the abysmal. Music. I don't know what like public domain garbage they dug up or what composer, composer they hired to write this m- to write this music i do wonder if they didn't have the budget for music so they kind of looked through the archives of what this company that produced the movie had at their disposal what i don't get is why like you know usually like with movies you have like (laughs) you have like music at like important parts of yeah. the of the story and of the plot to like emphasize whatever yeah. emotions this movie has music the entire time like yeah. i don't think that there was a single scene that didn't have some background song on it and it like almost never i would say 99 percent of the time it like never fit the scene no i kept trying to figure out like what it reminded me of and i think that i I think it is like the most accurate thing is like an 80s sitcom soundtrack. Like that's what it sounds like. It depends because there's such an eclectic mix of like shit music in here. It's not the one good thing about it, I guess, is that it's not the same song like loop. No, it's not. There's like different songs. One thing I hated about American Gothic. You didn't like this. Is the the music was terrible and it was looped. It was the same music music that wasn't even music that was like a like a noise as to where with this this was like what you would consider music i guess it's bad (laughs) but it's music for sure there's so many different songs in here and they're all equally bad yes and they all kind of feel like they're out of different things like one song reminded me of something i would have saw in maybe like a like a 90s uh, made for tv kids movie like the my pet monster movie. yeah some of it was very like juvenile sounding none of it fit and i'm sure that there are a few scenes like i know i was like there's no scene that has no music i'm sure there are like a handful of them but like the majority of the film i feel like there's background songs happening and they're all like much too loud yeah. like way louder than they need to be yeah but yeah they are very just like mismatched yes it's weird it's really weird uh it definitely I mean, the movie is not scary at all, oh but God. like the soundtrack alone just takes away any any attempt yeah. at like tension or 
whatever, you know, might have been the hope. Yeah, I mean, if you tried to put this music on to like Halloween or any other <laughs> hereditary like, scary movie, <laughs> anything, it it would diffuse yeah. any kind of tension or terror or anything that it was trying to build. So, while while you're right, I don't think any music would have made this movie scary. It might have helped it somewhat. Yeah. It might have made the the tension scenes tolerable, but I think that moves me into. The second most glaring issue with this movie is the abysmal editing. Oh, it's so awful. There is so (laughs) so many bad. bad editing choices here. One is that they linger on certain scenes for so long. You know, I went to I went to YouTube to look this up and the first um, result is the movie. And the second result is actually probably the thing Kaylee would draw attention to the most from this movie is that there is a there is a scene where a girl finds a dead body and she screams <laughs> and they keep showing the body and her scream and the body and her scream. Now, I didn't click on the clip, but I have to assume that that is just the clip unedited. Yeah. And if that's the case, the scene is are you ready for this? Forty seconds yeah 40 which feels like it felt like 40 five, but i thought i was like five minutes i thought i was exaggerating my head when i was like dude it's like almost a there's minute. so many shots like that like there was a minute in a movie of it, someone just screaming and going back and forth it's so much longer it's than you horrible think that it's a minute horrible. sounds like because a minute doesn't sound like much no, but, but when but you're like, lingering on the exact same scene for a full yeah. minute like what we talk about, like with film, like how everything on screen needs to have a purpose. Like yeah. every scene, like that's why they cut out like the good hellos and goodbyes from phone calls and stuff. So to spend like a minute, almost a minute on this. Of your 90 minutes. Of, yeah. Yeah. Of just this girl who's not even the main character, mind you. Like she's not. She's just another person, you know, that's kind of in, in this. Um, and there's several other scenes as well where there's like unnecessary time spent oh yeah lingering it happens throughout throughout the film but it's so funny because like this whole opening is probably um well okay actually the very first part of this yeah. film is really sad and also doesn't have like any any relevance any to relevance the to the rest of the story not at all but basically it starts with this it's girl. a red herring i think i guess i think it's a really shitty red herring if that's the case because we don't Anyway, but it it starts with this girl who's calling into um, this like talk show. These used to be so popular, the like advice radio shows in the like 80s and 90s. I don't feel like we have those anymore because people don't really listen to radio. Yeah. Um, anyway, she's calling in and like telling uh, what ends up being, I guess, one of the main characters, um, Dr whatever his I name is i don't care she's like telling him this horrible story about how she's been sleeping with her dad for the past two years but i think it has it's like a rapey thing that's going on and she's suicidal and she's telling him she doesn't want to be alive anymore and he does a really bad job at like trying to he's get literally her sitting there making paper yeah airplanes. like he he's just like saying very basic like he's clearly not connecting to her taking it that seriously and then she ends up killing herself like she's like on air on air she shoots herself um so there's that opening that happens that's like really somber and sad and paints a totally different picture for the film is gonna be right because like the opening by itself i was like good yeah yeah i'm like okay that's Mm -hmm. really sad but then the next part of the opening that we get is this really um like sleazy real estate agent who's super racist (laughs) she has this uh japanese couple and she's like trying to like get them into this house and just she says so many different things that are so like uh like she calls like a bonsai garden an origami garden and she calls them you type you, know, you like you you people typically like these things. yeah she's like you you people like it clean or you're, you people keep it neat or tidy or your something. people or you people or something she like says that it like that though either way it's, it's a very like i know oh, don't i know you that. i know you people i think that's what it is i know you people like your house is clean yes you people 
That's it's such an so... 80s. That's like, that's why I say like these types of movies are, are such time capsules. This one in particular is such a time capsule because. She also refers to them as Oriental. She, to their face. <laughs> Wild. Wild. Absolutely crazy. But everyone called Asian people Oriental. I know. In, that's, the, in the 80s. It is like when you look back, you're like, oh my God. But this movie in particular, because like you can definitely watch a lot of films and see like problematic, you know, by today's standards, things that you would never do you would never say or whatever but i feel like there were so many in this one um anyway and yeah she's like she's just so ridiculous she's like freaking out because there's a can of dog food and a bunch of ants on it in the kitchen and she's like trying to like wipe it up and it's just so shitty about it all and then she finds the dead body in the bathtub. And that's when the 42nd scene of her screaming <laughs> and cutting back to the body in the shower happens. Yeah. It's, yeah, God. And I guess that'll bring me into the third uh, glaring issue of this film. is It's a slasher movie and the kills are dreadful. The kills are so bad. And not only that, but the killer is also one well, of the worst. That would be my fifth. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to move into that. But the kills are just so uninspired. So the poster features like the killer's uh, weapon, which he makes in the opening, which is like razor blades mm. stuck in a plunger. And the first time we see it, I swear, it's literally just two razor blades stuck in the side of yeah. like a like a wood handled plunger that's very thin and, and then, then the, the next time we see it it's like it's got like eight yeah so i don't know if he's supposed to be like making it as he walks or, or what i don't exactly but they literally cut to like a completely different looking yeah. piece of wood with eight razor blades in it and that's who he you know that was super weird yes uh the killer himself i mean i guess we can just get into that so the killer is i don't i don't really care like i'm not that kind of person who's like this movie's problematic for 2024 like yeah duh it definitely it's 1987 is. that's how it was so i don't give a shit that the movie is like offensive or whatever but um it's funny to watch it because it really does try to vilify homeless people oh my gosh yeah and you know it's it's interesting because it's like it's like they get halfway there because the reason, like, the reasoning for his, like, his motives for his killing spree, which is not that he's the father of the girl in the opening, like, which Kaylee had thought, kind of, which is yeah. what would make sense. And that's, so, like, Kaylee had said that, oh, it's probably the dad. And I said, okay, so he, and then my, you know, I went into my writing mode, like I always do. And I was like, oh, okay, so probably what's going on here then is that, you know, this guy gave bad advice to his daughter. She killed herself. And so he's trying to hurt him by taking away his romantic partner since he's fucking his daughter. Right. And so he doesn't know who he's screwing because Adrian Barbeau, who's in this movie, she is having this like little romance affair type thing, even though the guy's not married. But they're doing this like phone call thing where she calls in to act like Mary Lou and then Mary Lou leaves clues of where to find her. And then he goes and has sex with her in these open houses that she has. But like, it's, it's kind of almost like anonymous, even though they know each other. And I'm thinking, okay, so he doesn't know what real estate agent she's screwing or he's screwing. So he's just killing random real estate agents that work for the company that she gets houses from. And, you know, he's trying to, he's doing one after the other to try to see if he gets the right one. Right. No, no, he's only, he's, none of that is, is relevant here. None of the plot that's set up in this movie has anything to do with absolutely anything. He even like re-listens to the tape. Like that's going to have some yeah, impact I, to the character later on. It's just like. No, he's just mad because the prices of houses are too high yeah. and he blames real estate agents. I mean, to be fair, he does want to kill his girlfriend because she's a real estate agent. Like he's is trying to punish him for dating a real estate agent, but he like also, it's, but he thinks it has that nothing to she's do with the one that raises the rates, right? Which 
That's not how that That's works, not, by the way. No. Um, I, yeah. But then he's also mad at him because he has a radio show where he talks to people and gives them like bad advice. And he's mad at him. Which seems for that. true because I feel like he all is. the time that we listen to him on air, like talking to people, we don't get a lot of him with other people, but everything just seems. He's never helpful. Never no, once. Never <laughs> once is, is he helpful to anybody in this Not film. at all. Uh, if, yeah. If that guy has a degree, I want it revoked. Yeah. I also think just the fact that like, so he's been calling in, talking to him. Like, I feel like that should have been the red herring. Like the guy that's calling in and is like, yeah, I'm so angry. And like they had it come in and blah, blah, blah. Like, I feel like that should have just been that would have made more sense to be a red herring, in my opinion. But anyway, um, yeah. And then the other like it, the, like everything feels so disjointed because there's like the detectives oh that are also like looking into the murders and that like the lead detective is horrible i hated so him he bad. felt so pointless so annoying um such a man's man too cuz this movie is pretty anti liberal which is like yeah. kind of its whole shtick yeah it's like you know real men believe in the death penalty yeah. and you're a damn pussy liberal if you don't want to kill these people and, and like yeah like once the they detective. have your girlfriend or wife yeah. like you'll want to kill them then and the detective and... is very much like going after the radio show host because he says like therapy is for pussies <laughs> and they don't really do anything and you know real men just suck it up yeah the cop is horrible though like I don't know. He just was like getting on my nerves. I didn't like his reactions to anything. His um like boss, like the the chief oh, yeah. or whatever, we liked him because yeah. like his wife is like calling and being like, I don't know, like I listened to this radio show and this guy keeps calling in, like I think there's something there and he like takes her phone call and is like, Oh, he's calling again. Okay, like thanks, honey, like I love you. Yeah. And then tells his detective, like, I want you to listen to it, like follow this up. Like, he actually listens to his wife. 99.99% of the time in any other movie is set in this time period. The police chief would be getting a call from his wife who's saying, like, I think I got it figured out. Or, like, maybe this is a lead. And he would be thinking she's hysterical. He'd be belittling her. He'd be talking shit behind her back. Yeah, well, the detective is like, this is bullshit. Like, I know, this is but, so lame, but it's the... weird for the captain yeah. in one of these movies to actually be like, Okay, like I'm taking you seriously, and he's like, and she calls in, and he's like, I love you. I'll make sure I talk to him, and it's like, it's like, like being really, sincere it's like about really it. Sweet, yeah. and I'm like, I can't believe it. I, I, I can't believe this character exists yeah. in 1987. Well, because all the other guys in this, I shouldn't say all the other ones, but the other, another big character that I hated, oh my God, is this like rival yeah. real estate agent who like. <laughs> I forget what they said. He doesn't actually, I think he only does like foreclosures and stuff now because he's just like such a bad like agent. Um, anyway, he's like the most, like the epitome of like a sexist, chauvinistic yeah. like pig. Yeah. Um, he's been going around to Adrian Barbeau's like her properties and sabotaging them and like wrecking them and stuff. And there's this scene where they go to like an, um, it's like an estate. Like they're, I don't remember. They're like vying over the. Um, it's like an like, estate. Like it's like well, somebody they're, passed They're trying away to and... land the the house. As yeah. Like you know, I don't, I don't know how this works. I don't either. I, I honestly. That's don't. why I was like, I'm not sure. So what the way the it. way they made it seem, and I don't think this is the way real estate works, but I have no idea what happens behind the scenes with real estate. But it seems like they get a bunch of real estate agents together. And then they show the house and then they, I don't know if they pitch or they, you know, speak on it or whatever, but the way it played out in the movie, it felt like is that, you know, they showed up to try to see if they could land the house as like a contract. Yeah. And then they would pick the one who, who, I don't know, they thought was best to sell it. Well, they had the, the woman that was so it's an appraiser who's there and like appraises yeah, the house. I know that. And then I, I thought that it was like all of those real estate agents had clients who made like offers on the house. So like, it's more yeah, just it's like weird. the agents are there on their behalf. But again, I don't know if that's like true oh, at all to reality. Okay. So each agent 
is like has there for their, their client, own client who's like and potentially each one is interested. coming in to like auction it up yeah like because it's like an estate okay. like it's like somebody's property that's passed i thought and... that, so uh, that's interesting i don't know though i thought with real estate you hired a real estate agent to show the house and to sell it one person or at least one you know Company. I think usually that's what it is, but I think but this was a different what you're scenario saying is like because ev- they it just was... like had it open to anybody. Yeah. So maybe it's up to auction. I because don't know. I it missed was that. something because like the the properties that like real estate agents have, like where they're like, this is our property, and like we have all these other properties. Like they're already like being they've already been contacted by like the the owners of the house or whatever. We're like, we want to sell our house, right? right? So then are... they're but then with that house, it was one person. And then they, because it's like such a big, like fancy house, they had the appraiser come in. Yeah. Um, and it was probably an estate. Like, that's why I keep saying estate, because I think that the owner died. So then it was owned by the estate and they're just trying to sell the property. Mm. But rather than being like, let's go pick one real estate agent. They're like, let's have all these different. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally misunderstanding that. But regardless, I don't, I don't know. Whatever the politics are. <laughs> I like, don't care. Uh, real estate agents. Maybe somebody can tell us in the comments if you guys know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this guy comes and he's just so awful to the appraiser there. She's like this really cute, like younger woman, very professional. And he like slaps her ass. He's like telling her and Adrian Barbeau's character that they have to like lay down and have sex with their like clients to sell things and just horrible stuff. Just stuff that you like would never. Then also accuses them of being prudes. Yeah. But you would like never imagine somebody saying that like in a professional setting anymore um this guy's so awful this guy's little office space that he has with just like generic beer laid out on the table and stuff it's literally just like you know the corner of a house or something that they set this table up and they just threw a bunch of random shit on it and then had some like meatheads come stand next to him who has been uh, you know, fulfilling his little dubious plans. Yeah, like it's, some guy that he's like paying to go. It's so low it's budget so, in that moment. Yeah, it is. And our and our main like villain, our, our our you know our killer here. Um, we don't reveal his face till the end, which makes you think maybe it's that asshole that Kayla right. was just talking about or something. So that's why we're talking about red herrings here. But it ends up being no one of yeah. any relevance to the plot. But also like. They only show his like broken up, dirty cowboy boots and him r- randomly eating uh, dog food. Yeah. Um. So it's just that stuff is really funny. It's like this this poor guy. So what it ends up being is that he's been squatting in this house for like a year. No one wanted it. He was able to live in it. And then they tried to come sell his house. Yeah. And he took it out on the real estate agents who tried to give away his house, even though he's just a squatter. It's so weird because, like, at the end, he gives this, like, it's almost like they're trying to make him sympathetic. Yeah. But then, then they're like, then he's like, I, like killing just gets easy like the more you do it and then the guy's like you also had to like track them down and stalk them right and he's like yep like that was pretty fun <laughs> like yeah. so it just kind of like i don't know i this is like one of those movies where um again like it's looking at it from the lens of 2024 but it's just like so shitty to be like <laughs> i don't know i don't know it just is such a caricature of like what um like rich white people think of as homeless people being like they're gonna come in and kill you yeah. and like they eat dog food and are there homeless people who've had to eat pet food sure like but that's like sad that just makes me feel so bad that there's people out there that live like that when yes you have the, these real estate agents listing and selling homes for over a million dollars for like two people to live in them and they're like five six bedroom houses this of course is a reminder of when a million dollar home used to be like a big deal and like a mansion and people would be like oh my god you live in a million dollar home dude like every house is like a million dollars now it's crazy if you want like a big house they're like 20 million dollars yeah. so it's incredible how much times have changed in yeah. such a short amount of time how much the market has inflated on houses especially since we had a subprime mortgage crisis where the entire housing market crashed and somehow has recovered so exponentially you would think that we would have stayed in the lows again for a while but no somehow they've inflated to 
you know, gargantuan prices. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, let's, okay, let's rush through some of the, some of the notes here that I got. I think we, we definitely nailed quite a bit of them. Yeah. It's a very um, memorable, like there's a lot of parts that are just, we have a, stand out. we have a scene in here that feels straight out of a porno. Uh, we have this like blonde chick who's actually the girl from the movie House. She's mm -hmm. the she's the, like the sexy neighbor who Roger Cobb has like a thing for and babysits her kid. Um, she's in here and she's trying to show this house to a guy, <laughs> and the the dialogue between them and her and going like and opening up her blouse and he comes in and he's like. It's it is it's, straight out of a porno. Yeah. Like, I feel like I think I've they watched did. That they just like they they filmed this and then they're like, okay, porn. like reset, like let's do the porn part now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really did feel like one. Um, Which is funny because there's very little like nudity in this. Oh, it's um, such a teasy movie. Yeah, it, it loves to tease breasts and and nudity and sexuality. Like there's the lamest sex scene ever oh it's really awful it's um, like really unsexy and but there's so many girls that have like like lingerie yeah they get like... they put they put all these pretty girls and then they're like they'll zoom in on their butts while they're walking and i'm just like well the killer even cuts a girl's top open to like electrocute yeah. her like cuts the bra open and i'm thinking okay he's gonna pull her tits out like why else why else would you even do that in a movie cut her bra open when her yeah. chest is and then he just like leaves it and walks away. And but it does that with every single yeah. thing in this movie. Like every, it's like tasteful, which is but like not. in this movie. No, come on, yeah. What are we doing here? It's so stupid. We do see some nudity. Um, there's the a there's the, a little bit. The it's girl not who comes like... out of the pool, and then we do see Adrian Barbeau's uh, tit from like the side. But um, anyway, it doesn't matter. It just it's another annoying part of it. Um, there's. <laughs> Speaking of the editing in this movie, there's a scene <laughs> where Adrian Barbo is like, I'm going to go take a shower. And she literally <laughs> walks out of the room and then back into the room. Now, the only separation between those two scenes is literally like him flipping French toast yeah, like for, for about like, one second. Yeah, it's so fast. So like he walks over to like French flip the French toast and he flips it. And then she walks back in the room and I'm like, like, oh, she's coming back in the room because she forgot something or something no she that's after the shower it's so that's fast it. so it, bad the way it's edited it literally feels like she like walks out of the room and back in but it's after a shower the transition there's, is oh my god so bad there's also another scene where adrian barboa's character and the doctor guy like they're in his house and or yeah and like one of them like opens the door or something and like literally like the next shot is the detective like opening oh, yeah. a door to like look around and it like literally feels like yeah, he's, he's in, in the, the house, house yeah. but it's a new scene like you're at the fucking police station or whatever so weird the, the editing is just horrendous yeah it's so awful i feel like people who called in to these radio talk shows were like the og trolls like, oh sure like before i'm sure that they're well i don't know though i mean yes there probably were before the internet like a lot of yes. these people would love to call in and just say the most vile shit yeah imaginable on the air they just gotta because they could get away it. with it yeah. because they're like anonymous but there i also remember like i know my mom used to listen to like some random like radio talk shows and like People like called and like actually talked and like wanted like advice. And, like that was like the they're like the podcast before podcast time, yeah. but the more like you have like a bunch of different um guests on there instead of like, you know, when you're on a podcast now it's like one guest per episode. I actually think I would be freaking awesome at that. I at being be, a radio talk show host. Yeah. I would love I would doing that. I would be awful at it, I think. I would love <laughs> it. Like, I would love doing it. I'd love to talk to you guys. Uh, watching i would love to have people call in the sinister and, and cinema and... helpline <laughs> no just what movie like... do i watch <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah what what movie is this uh it has a guy <laughs> um oh, i love that i I've, I've considered it i've considered getting like a um 
like a voicemail. Mm. They have those. Like yeah. A lot of the shows that I watch, like political shows that I watch. Oh, sure. Have, like, yeah. Lots of. You know, people can call in and you get these really funny messages where they call in and they talk mad shit <laughs> and then you get to respond to it. That would that would really that would really tickle me pink. Uh, I don't think we'd get that many like angry people. I think we'd get a lot of like nice comments. Don't get my and, don't, like, don't 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 squash my dreams. I <laughs> I just think our <laughs> most of our subscribers are like. No, I'd love to hear. They from, would just from, be nice. Be nice, a bunch of nice cool people. people. But man, I got I got to have a troll or two. I, otherwise, I'd probably get rid of it. Well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd be horrible at doing a talk show. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, I mean, the detective is is straight up useless. Um, oh, awful. I hate him. The ending of this is hilarious. He. <laughs> this <laughs> has got to be one so... of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in a film in my entire life. So, the you know the killer's going to kill the girlfriend, and and the talk show guy is there, and he's trying to talk to him, and he stalls him, I guess, long enough, even though they had a. There's a really funny scene before that where. The, his girlfriend is clearly <laughs> kidnapped from the radio, uh, you know, building. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, well, she's not a kid, so we can't you can call in a kid. Forty-eight hours, it's before. Like, bro. You know, a killer's yes. on the loose. He abducted this guy's girl. He literally and he's just, just like says nothing that we can do because and he, he like, just walks out. He like thinks because the call came from the radio station that they're station, like thank you. that they're like trolling him. So that's why he says it. He's just like, whatever, like it's not. But then what doesn't make sense either. Okay, there's a couple scenes in between when they okay, when he figures out because she's like, don't forget about Mary Lou. So he's like, I know what house he's taking her to. Whatever. Oh, I forgot though. On the <laughs> the detective finds out that the calls are coming from inside the building, kind of thing, like uh when a stranger calls. But then when he's it, it cuts to this scene like a few seconds later where the detective is broken down on the side of the oh, road yes, yes such a funny thing to write into the movie so weird he's just like has the hood up and he's just calling and being like <laughs> hey you need to send the black and white to come pick me up it's so it's fucking so funny weird. it's so unnecessary it literally just have just... him arrive a little late or like just after she's kidnapped the fact they have to show him broken down yeah like, it's what super... kind of cars this guy driving um, yeah so and then the other thing i was gonna say so, so two things one when the doctor I keep wanting to call him like some I don't know. Anyway, uh it's something with a K, I thought, but maybe it's like KDXR or something is like the radio station. He goes to the house and like she like they hear him, like they're inside and they hear him pull up and she like runs out into the balcony. He's like, I'm here. And the killer like pulls her back, like oh my god scary. And, and then, when then he walks in the house, yes, the scene when he like runs in, quote unquote, horrible fl- framing. Like they're just so clearly standing there, and he's just like <laughs> <laughs> so awful. Like doesn't give you any sense of urgency. Like we should have seen him run into the house. Anyway, it's the so- second thing I don't understand is then a SWAT team shows up, yeah. but they're like ninjas. They're not like real SWAT <laughs> team because they have like they don't have like any like mi- like military or like police anything they're just like just all in black with like um, they're also completely pointless they don't do literally completely pointless and i don't understand why they're there because he doesn't tell anybody that he's going there he just says i'm going to a house i mean i guess we're supposed to assume he tells them the house mary lou and he he discerns for himself that's where it's at because they had sex there right and he, he doesn't goes. tell them so he the address. Tell him who, but then the SWAT going. team shows up. The ninja team like shows right at, up. Basically the exact same time he does. It's yes. only like a minute or two. Yes. Later. And they do nothing. Um, the detective can't figure out shit before that. The detective comes in though as well. And he shoots the guy like a few times because he's huge. Yeah, yeah. Shoots him. Through the head. In the head. Straight middle. Right through. And. He falls down. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. He's dead. Until he's not. <laughs> Until he opens his eyes and you're like, wait, what? So when he sits up, you can literally see brain matter. Yes. Bo- like blown like out blown the back of, his, out of head. his head. Yeah. And then for some reason, getting kicked in the balls and thrown over railing, falling 10 whole feet to the to the grass, to the soft grass. That kills him. That kills him. Yeah. But here's the funny thing is they show it. With like this 
very sharp, menacing looking like rod staff fucking oh, pole. Yeah, like you think he's like gonna fall on it and impale him. You think himself. you're gonna show him like impaled? Yeah. And no, he's just literally like yeah. laying there in the fetal position, laid on the grass like comfy, but he's dead now. I thought it Shot was gonna the do head, n- fine. <laughs> Falling into the grass from ten feet up dead hey i thought for a second i was like is this <laughs> gonna be like a zombie movie all of a sudden like they're gonna i don't understand why it was he's a alive. zombie movie would have died with oh, getting yeah, shot in the head <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen that done i mean i have seen like i'm sure people getting grazed because you see that all the time actually in movies where people get like grazed in the head by a bullet and they I like, shot him know, six times like knocks them out but they're like alive i shot him through the head to go immediately <laughs> through your head that's wild yeah it bracket so... wouldn't bracket wouldn't believe him he'd be like you're he'd, lying he'd like, i did think they were gonna pull a him. halloween when he like when they looked over i thought he wasn't gonna be there but then the swat team comes up the ninjas come up with their guns and they all hold guns to him for like a final shot and then the best <laughs> segment of the film is after that <laughs> there's a guy listening with a big jukebox boom to box. the boom box to the radio. He's like putting quarters Cause, cause in and Mary Lou- <laughs> <laughs> typing in his. It's all right. Boombox. <laughs> Mary Lou's calling and she's like, hey, and doing her weird accent. And then a <laughs> random guy comes up. Robs him at knife point. Robs <laughs> <laughs> him at knife point. And, and the, the guy just it. like sits there like doesn't do anything. It's supposed to show that like LA is overrun with crime. Right. But it's so funny because it's, it's such just a, like such a ending. random ending of the movie. Well, especially because like the like it's Mary Lou, so it's yeah. it's Adrian Barboa and yeah, they went the right doctor. back to their kink. Yeah, they they're like nothing. they're like happy. That's like yeah, to show that yeah. they're like we're alive. And they like, learned we're being, zero. We're being like silly and spontaneous again. Yeah. Meanwhile, some guys getting robbed at knife point. So some, weird. Some teenage girls being freaking abused, molested, and raped by her father. Yeah. Guy does nothing to help her, sits there making fucking paper airplanes while he's talking to some suicidal teen. She kills herself on air, and his girlfriend and him have this like little cute romance thing going on on the phone. This dude starts killing people in the area <laughs> to get back at them for their, you know, carelessness and whatever. And then as soon as he's dead, they're like, right back to it. Like it's not a care crazy. in the world. Let's just get our kink back on. It's like no lessons have been learned. None. No, <laughs> no reflection. None. You think he's going to have a reflection because he like takes the tape with him where he goes and he listens to her death like over and over, supposedly. Right. But there's no character growth. No, there's no there's no moment of, of like, you know, taking that that like. Taking that time to really reflect on like, well, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Maybe, maybe my show's hurting people. It's like, no, let's just fuck again. It's let's just really use this crazy. As, as like a flirting tool yeah. for us and our kink and everyone can just laugh. And when the, when Mary Lou calls in the first time and all the guys are like, this guy's even got his eyes closed and he's like <laughs> dreaming of her. And he's like, oh, She's and all the guys like, are looking so at each other like, oh, oh, and I'm like, listen to the girl. This sounds like the biggest ditzy bimbo I've ever heard in my life. She's just like, I, it's so funny. Cause like we, there's like shots of her with like pantyhose, yeah. like spraying perfume on herself. And like, it's like the shots are really sexy, but they don't see that. No. And I'm like, this is, I guess, before catfish. Like they don't know what she looks like and they don't care. They don't care. But like she could look like anything. I but she's not even talking that sexy. She's like, my boyfriend, like, blah blah oh, blah yeah. do you have any ideas and the, he's like well what is he like and she's like wine um like long walks on the beach baby carrots. baby carrots <laughs> which was so random mm-hmm. and then they even say it later because they like have sex and she's he's like no she's like sorry we didn't get to the baby carrots. and i was like oh like, he gave they... her the baby carrot all right bro what are they doing with those baby carrots Number one, <laughs> I think they're measuring his dick with them. Is ba- are baby carrots like some they're kind like, of? No, this is one big. This one's bigger than yours. <laughs> are they an aphrodisiac that I didn't know about? They are not. <laughs> <laughs> baby no carrots. googling necessary. So weird. To know that's not an aphrodisiac. But yeah, all the guys are like, ooga, like 100%. when she's talking. But she has such a like a clearly fake like 
oh yeah a southern accent yeah. like she sounds not like like it just doesn't sound like a real person you think they care it's so funny they just want their fantasy so yeah just uh oh man so this is yeah i mean it's on youtube since it's free and everything it, it is entertaining um it's horrible it's not like inter it's not the level of something like um like troll 2 or something like it's not like that oh no it's not entertaining it's like not that. like that level of entertaining but it was entertaining enough that like i can reasonably be like if you like really bad films like if you like watching bad films yeah uh this would be a fun one to watch with friends and like <laughs> yeah yeah um the our main like douchebag guy here the the misogynistic chauvinistic yeah. prick um he somehow he i don't know it, he hired a prostitute or something uh no she's like another person that's like selling a house but she's like if you want to sell it like you have to play by my rules mm. i don't know i was so con i thought that was a setup i thought that was like I adrian barbeau yeah, was like same. i hired a girl that was such a weird scene to like make to like catch you yeah. doing something and then she like puts a but no around him and then she goes swimming while he goes to take a piss and then something that he really pissed me off is that he gets killed off screen yeah. which it's like he's of the all the characters kill of the yeah movie, that you want to see somehow dead. You kill him off screen which really pissed me off because yeah. it's like man i really want to watch that guy i mean nobody would fuck this guy there's no way unless he had like you know leverage over you or money or something so i i genuinely don't he's he's horrendously awful yeah he's horrible um and then also uh, he tells on himself like so simply. He's so like in dumb. front of like the board, and and so he's just dumb. like, he's like, you know that I trashed your condo. Yeah, because she's like, I sold them, and he's like, you're lying. You couldn't have sold them. I trashed. Them. You know I did. And then the whole like, board is like, uh, can you repeat that? It's like, does so he need dumb. to? So dumb. I'd say that's beyond a gotcha. Yeah. I think it's time to yeah call it call it a day with him. And he's like, oh, I would take your license away. It's like, can't you fire him? Yeah, like right just, now. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I think that's it. So yeah, a really silly movie. Very silly. Um. Very bad. But fun to talk about. It was fun. Yeah. We had fun. We were like laughing a good amount of it. I mean, there's just so <laughs> many question marks everywhere throughout <laughs> so this many. film. It is so poorly written. It is so. It feels like you know a couple films edited together and trying to make sense of it it's weird it's a weird one it's like yeah i'd love to see a <laughs> script for this movie do you think they had a script yes i do That's crazy. i think they had a script it's fucking crazy um <laughs> i might not be the best writer on planet earth i know that but holy shit i could write a better script than this in an hour in an hour <laughs> I guarantee it. I believe you. I don't know why it's I think Grogu, so hard. I think Grogu could write a better script than this. I don't know why it's so hard to write a competent story. Because some people story. just can't write. But a competent story is not complicated. What you need is you need people you to be, read it and then be like, this doesn't make any sense. Gener like you can make it generic and just yeah. kind of go through basic beats and whatever. Yeah. You know? But I mean, somebody thought they bought, they bought this. They bought this produced it i just can't so, for the life it happened of me. It, <laughs> it got made these are the types of movies that i'm always uh, this is the 80s and there's a lot of cocaine and people were just yes. like trying to rush these things out as fast yeah. as possible and they're like i don't really give a shit just give me a slasher you know make it make it somewhat watchable um i get that but i just don't understand i i really these are the types of movies that i always am talking about where i'm like if this can get made <laughs> How can I not get a script sold? How? <laughs> There's no way. If I gave, if I put out my scripts right now that I've written, I 100% guarantee you every single person who read them would be like, yeah, okay, it's better than this. <laughs> like, yeah. So if that can get made, how can mine not get made? I don't get it. Anyway, I guess people just aren't throwing money around like this now. That's right? true. That's another thing. Like people don't throw away money now it's either like really small low budget horror um or or like tentpole 
two hundred million dollar blockbusters. So anyway, that's that. Open house. Uh, watch it at your own discretion. Yep. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.